Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel. Jordan and I are back here at our main remodel project and in our previous video, you saw us tackle a huge problem that we had with the baseboard. We had an inch and a quarter gap between the original parquet flooring and this wall. It was left to us by the original installers. Thanks a lot guys. But we came up with an innovative solution and we custom made this baseboard and it worked perfectly and we love the way it looks. And also in that video, we said that this was paint week here at Stud Pack. By the end of the next week, we want to have the entire inside of this house painted, and I know we can do it. Today is Sunday. Yesterday, almost the whole family was here, and we got a large chunk of the prep work completed. Jordan and I and his little brother Josh are back here today to fine tune the prep work. So what does prep work mean to us? Well, it's five major steps. The first step, you got to fill hundreds of nail holes. The second step, you got to sand all your wood filler and all the imperfections. The third step, we like to vacuum up all the dust that's not collected by the sanders. Then we need to caulk everything and then cover everything is our final step. Cover all the floors and the windows, everything we don't want painted. Very first step for us, like we said, we're gonna fill all the nail holes. So we mixed up our Durham's water putty, super easy, and we filled all the nail holes that we could see. Well, we got about 98% of them. There's always that 2% you miss, especially on this dark lumber like this, but when we prime it, they're gonna stand out and we can catch those last 2% after we prime. And once we had all those nail holes filled, it was time to sand. So yesterday morning, I went on an equipment run. I got all the tape we needed, the paper to cover the floors, sandpaper, caulk, caulk guns, all that good stuff. And I was figuring, well, there's gonna be five of us, so I picked up 12 sanding blocks. I'll give two to each person, have a couple of spares. Everybody can grab a room and start sanding. Jordan actually started in this corner right behind him. And after a couple of minutes, he turns to me and says, Dad, this Durham's dried really hard. These sanding pads aren't cutting it. So I knew if my strongest guy was having trouble with the blocks, my helpers weren't gonna be happy either. So a few minutes later, I saw them all gathered in a corner, snickering and pointing at me. And a few minutes later, they came by with a petition they had written and they all signed. And the petition said, Dad, you gotta go buy some new power tools. So I ran to the Home Depot and I picked up a couple of electric sanders. And you can see they're pretty well used already. I got this Ryobi, it's good for getting in the corners, and a good old Makita, just like that, a quarter sheet. So I delivered these to the job site, they were busy using them, but I was pretty flustered because I had to buy new tools. I was so flustered, I left my cell phone in the shopping cart when I returned it to the corral at the Home Depot. So I got in the truck, ran over there, my cart was still right where I left it, right? But no phone. I ran in the store, Customer service had it, so whoever turned it in, appreciate you, bud. And we are finally ready to start sanding, and we each have a separate job. My job is back here in the three bedrooms. Now this crown molding that was here was already here. We didn't install it. And whoever did install it did a pretty good job. These corners aren't too bad, but they didn't pay any attention to the nail holes. They didn't set the nails, and they didn't fill any of the holes where the nails were set. My job, set nails, fill the holes and sand them. And what is Josh gonna do? Well, we actually figured that out about 10 minutes ago. When I patched this hole right here from the old coax for the cable TV, I sanded it with the Ryobi sander and I realized it is smoothing down this paneling really well. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of drips and runs from the previous paint job. So Josh is gonna get that sander and sand this living room. It's not too bad. And all I'm asking him to do is basically go this fast and it's gonna make a huge difference in the way the final product looks on these walls. And what's Jordan gonna be doing? Probably outside on the hammock on his cell phone. Yeah, right, buddy. No, he's actually gonna give all the trim a once-over. Yesterday, we had a bunch of people here. They're not on a job site every day, so Jordan's gonna go behind, double-check all the work, make sure all this is fine-tuned and dialed in and ready for paint. Let's all grab our tools and get to work.
Nice, all the sanding is done. Nice job, everybody. Now towards the end there, you may have seen us go into the finished bathrooms and we had to sand the inside of the door jams. Now these sanders come with these little bags, but they tend to leak a lot of dust. So Jordan asked me, Dad, is there any way we can attach the vacuum to the sander? So we pulled the bag off of here and I got the hose and a roll of duct tape, knowing I'm gonna have to tape that thing on there, but check this out. That slides right on there. That has never happened in my entire life. Hey Josh, run outside and see if the world has stopped turning, would you bud? We're still going, we're good? All right, so filling all the holes is done, all the sanding is done, and our next steps are caulking, vacuuming, and covering all the floors. Now caulking and vacuuming, one or two man job. Jordan and I can knock that out, but while we have Josh here, we thought the three of us would hop on it and try to get these floors covered. So Jordan's gonna hit the vacuum, vacuum around the perimeter so our tape will stick to the floor, and Josh and I are gonna tape and put paper down. Let's get to it. Jordan, Josh, y'all got these floors done? I can't even see in here, it's so dark outside. And in all seriousness, gang, it is really dark in this house. It is cloudy outside, it is 7.30, the sun is almost set below the horizon, and we don't have our beautiful halo lighting in here yet. And I just realized about an hour ago, I told Jordan, Jordan, you know what? I just realized why I don't install lighting in the house until the end of the project. It's so we don't have to work till 10 p.m. We go home when the sun sets. That's right. That's right. But we have the kitchen to do, and we have the living room to do. It won't take that long, but we have our Monday cut out for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey gang, we're back at the job site. Here it is Monday morning, and we are ready to get back to work. All we have left to do today is to finish covering those floors, a couple rooms left, cover all the windows in the cabinets, a little bit of coffee, and we are ready to paint. Now a lot of times, gang, we can do a deep dive into a project and stay busy for 20 minutes showing you all the details. But today, we're just gonna put you in a time lapse while we roll paper. So while we do all the work, you just get to sit back for a few seconds and watch us work for hours and hours. So we hope you enjoy it. All right, cool man, that is the end of day two and the prep work is almost done. We got all the cabinets covered, the entire house, all the floors are covered and all the windows are covered. All the nail holes are filled and everything's sanded. But you know what I wanna do right now, bud? What's that? I think I wanna go get the paint. You know, these days it's hard to find material. I just don't wanna stress about it. I wanna have it on site. Let's hop in the truck, run to the paint store. Let's do it. All right, gang, here we are at PPG Paints. Let's go inside and get what we need. All right, I got almost everything I had, everything but the paint, but that's how it is these days. Sometimes you gotta go to two or three places just to get everything you need. Let's head to the next door. All right, gang, stop number two. Let's continue to play. Does the paint store have paint? All right, home run there at Sherwin-Williams. They came through, had exactly what we needed. Definitely a contractor's vibe inside that store. We'll definitely be back here, but for right now, let's head back to the job site. All right, finally back at the job site and we're ready to paint. You don't look like you're ready to paint. What are you wearing? Well, that's true. I had to take your other brother, another other brother to the orthodontist. I don't want one to look kind of sharp, so I just dressed like this. Nice, you look good. And then I had to go to the drugstore and get some readers because I lost all three pair of my glasses. I couldn't read comments last night. 
and I picked these up. Pretty cool, huh? Don't those look sharp? Yeah, but you got you got like a design going on on the, on oh, the side there. I don't, don't tell me. I bought women's glasses again. I do that all the time. Well, at least I'll be able to read comments about me wearing women's glasses while I'm wearing women's glasses. Perfect. All right, dude, I'm going to get dressed. You ready? I'm yep. going to swap clothes. You ready? Cool. That's better. Now I'm ready to work. Now, remember at the beginning of the video, we said we have five steps we do in prep work. We're all done except for the caulking. And we're going to finish caulking today before we paint. Now, the tube of caulk says it is ready for paint after 30 minutes. So we figure by the time we start at the back of the house, work our way to the front of the house, get the sprayer set up, the caulk we applied in the back will be ready to go, and it's exactly what we're going to do. So what does caulking look like to us? We'll check it out. First thing we're going to do, we're going to get down here, we're going to caulk the top of the baseboard where it intersects the wall, and we're also going to caulk this joint on this custom baseboard we made. We're going to get up here on the ceiling and caulk the crown into the wall and the ceiling. And over on the doors, there's a bunch, right? Both sides of the casing on both sides, and on this stop, this is an integral stop. In other words, this stop is part of that board on the jam, so we don't have to caulk right here. If your stop is applied, you're gonna to wanna to caulk this seam too. This is the product we're using, DAP Painters Acrylic Latex Caulk, the 25 year brand. And I even bought Jordan his own caulk gun so we can both hit it hard and get this thing done. Cool, man. That does it. That is all the caulking and what a project that was. Every door, all the base, all the crown, every window and everything's covered. We are almost ready to paint. That completes our five step prep process, right? That we talked about at the beginning of the video. But there's one more thing we really got to do. Come on down here close, Jordan. And you can see all our prep work kicked up some dust right here. And there's dust and grit on this paper. The last thing I want is for the sprayer to blow that up in our wet paint on the baseboard. So while I'm setting up the sprayer, why don't you come in here with the vacuum and get it all clean for us? All right. All right, let's get going. All right, man, I finished vacuuming. Cool, well, while you were doing that, I got the sprayer set up, but you know, we haven't used it in a few months, so before we get all suited up in our gear, why don't we get, the, get it dialed in with our pattern and our pressure and all that. Sounds good. Right. This wall is gonna get wallpaper, so we're just gonna use this as our test wall. I've got a 311 tip in here, and I got the pressure about medium. We always wanna start off lower and build up to a higher pressure. We don't wanna spray with too high a pressure, right? It wastes paint, and it's not good for the equipment. Let's give this a pass and see how we're doing. That felt good. It looks good. Hard to tell. But it does. <laughs> it looks like you're just getting the wall wet. Yeah. Well, let me do some trim and then... Yeah. Uh, Why don't you just hit this? Right, right. Yeah. You won't hurt a thing. Nope. Um, I think we're good. We're not, getting, we're not getting any feathering. Right. I'm really liking that. Why don't we go in the living room and try it on one of these beams on the ceiling and that'll give us a really good idea because we're not painting on white, right? Right. I think we're good. I like it. All right, we're gonna head to the back of the house and work our way this way. We gonna paint in this? No, I got us all new dudes. I got... What? <laughs> no, I got us all new duds. <laughs> so let's suit up and get to spraying. It's about to be hot in these. Yep. Woo! These smell weird. It smells like somebody used it and then they just put it right back. You think this is an excessive 
just for the trim. all the prep work worth it right there. Yeah, and that's just primer. We could probably leave it like that and it would look better than most houses. Then it did, right. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. When we shoot these window sills, I'll do the base or we'll work our way out of the roof. Let's get it. Man, that was fantastic, Jordan. We spray painted the entire inside of this house, all the trim, three bedroom, two bath house, in what, just over an hour, right? Yeah. And I love the way the paint is laying on. Now, what kind of paint are we using and how do we like it? And how do we guarantee good results on your project? Well, to tell you the truth, gang, I am burning up in this. The sweat is running out of my arms here. Gross. So let me ditch the suit, grab a shower, get a glass of ice cold water, and give me just a second. All right, that's better. All cleaned up, got my water. Now let's go check out our spray rig. We're going to start with what paint we used. It's by Sherwin-Williams. You saw us over there at the store. It's their Extreme Block Stain Blocking Primer Sealer. And it's an oil-based primer. This stuff was $200 for a five-gallon bucket, $40 a gallon. We chose this product because we had a multiple of surfaces to cover. We had our new trim with a factory prime coat. We had the existing trim with latex on it and some of the existing trim with stain and varnish on it. This covers all three of those surfaces terrifically, and we can top coat it with a latex paint. Let's check out our spray rig, our trusty old Grayco Magnum X7. We've had this thing about three years, right, Jordan? And we sprayed everything from brick to furniture with this, and it does an incredible job. Now, it's not inexpensive, but it's also not gonna set you back thousands and thousands of dollars, and it's gonna last you a long time if you take care of it. Here's our dial setting. We always start off lower and gradually increase it until we get the pattern coming out of our tip that we're looking for. And in our opinion, this is a great setup for a DIYer or a homeowner who wanna up their game, and it beats a brush and a roller every day of the week. So now that all the priming is done, it's ready to switch colors and start spraying our finish coat, right? Not quite. Jordan and I actually don't call this a prime coat. We call it a reveal coat because it's going to reveal to us all those areas that we may have missed and all those areas that need a little bit more attention. In this little house we're working on, there are hundreds of nail holes in the trim, hundreds of nail holes that were filled and needed to be sanded, and hundreds of linear feet of caulk and we were bound to miss some of that. And knowing that we're going back around the house with a second coat of primer, it takes a little bit of the pressure off of Jordan and I, knowing we don't have to get it perfect the first time. So let's take a walk around the house and we're gonna show you what we're talking about. Now, Jordan and I have already walked the whole house and we are pretty happy with the outcome, right, Jordan? I don't think we missed too much. I'd say we got 95% of it. What we found was the areas we did miss are mostly on the old stain trim, like right up here, right up here in this corner. It's hard to see those cracks because this was a dark stain with a varnish over it. That's the reason we didn't caulk these beams at all. We thought it was gonna be much easier to prime them first and then we could see easily where we got a caulk. And each one of these has six seams we got a caulk on each beam, so that's gonna take a little bit of time. Down here on this baseboard, I see a nail we missed. That's probably the only nail we missed in the whole, in the whole baseboard, don't you think, Jordan? Yeah. Yep. Let's head to the front of the house and we'll show you a couple items up there. I missed this one section of crown. I caulked that, but I didn't do this or that. So we're gonna do that one real fast. And this inside miter right here could use a little bit of love. 
that piece of crown was already there. I added that one and that corner just fought me the whole time. So we're gonna put a little bit of caulk on that one. A little bit right here. So not too, too bad, right? I figure it'll take Jordan about 30 minutes to knock out all this caulking, but we're gonna spare you the boredom and we'll be back in a minute. Alrighty guys, we are done with caulking. Jordan and I can say for certainty, 100% of this house is caulked and it looks great. Especially these beams, all those black lines between all the moldings are gone. But there's one more step we wanna do. We're not quite ready to put on that second coat of primer. You're asking us, what now, Slipback? What could you possibly do next? Well, we're gonna do some shadow casting. And what is that? We're gonna take a light and shine it obliquely across the, our trim to highlight any spots we missed. Check this out, I got this rechargeable LED light that Klein Tools sent me. Thank you very much, Klein. Big shout out to you guys, this thing's awesome. We're gonna shine it obliquely across our molding and check that out. You see that little nib right there? Probably got blown up by the sprayer. We're gonna knock it off. And that was a little one. Come on to the back of the house, we got some bigger ones that have been hiding in the shadows. <laughs> so of all the door frames, this one's the worst. Back here in the corner. Yeah, who did that? I don't know. See that there? Got another one there. Come on down here, look at that. Just some areas that forgot to be sanded. But look over here. We've got this one on the master bedroom door. Don't even know what that is, but that's gotta come off. And that's what we're talking about. So we're quickly gonna go through the house, highlight all those, sand them off, make it flush, and then we're gonna start spraying some paint. been from the previous painter. Dad, we put that trim in. Oh, that's new trim? Yeah. That was me? Oh well. That's my only drip in the whole house. Give me a break. <laughs> cool, we went around the whole house, shadow casted all the trim. It's looking great. This place is about 100% perfect. Yeah, he cast quite a shadow. I think I'm just gonna put him outside. All right. There we go, now we're ready. And like we said earlier, I'm just gonna wear the respirator. No overspray, so I'm feeling really good with this. Even wore my black shirt. That's how confident I am that I'm not gonna get paint all over the place. All right, guys, we are done. Second coat, half the time and about half the paint. We got enough left to do the doors, right? And it looks incredible. That beam is 50 years old, but it looks like it was installed yesterday. That's how great our system is working for us. And remember, we got our casing and our trim in this house from Home Depot. And the sprayer is a $400 airless from Lowe's. And the paint right down the street at Sherwin-Williams. And we had Jordan's 17 year old brother, a high school senior with a bad case of senioritis helping us out and he did a great job. Our point is we don't have that much invested in our products or our tools and you can get professional results just like this. And how do we get those results? Remember three days of prep, but all that paid off because we put on two coats of primer in less than three hours. We sure hope you enjoyed that video. Jordan and I had a great time making it for you. And you gotta paint that like button for us, but before you paint it, make sure you prep it just like we prepped this house. Ask a question, drop us a comment, and we will see you on our next Stud Pack video.